Look at that, a 1986 Dodge Omni GLH. Look at that, a 1983 AMC Eagle Station Wagon. Look at that, a 1986 Dodge Shelby Charger. Looks like we're doing an 80s car review video today. Cue the 80s intro, guys. takes you to the 70s actually, and in 1975 when Chrysler was building large four-door boats so to speak, it saw the emissions writing on the wall and knew it had to reinvent the automotive wheel to help stay relevant. Looking through the later 70s cars like the Honda Civic and VW Rabbit, these started gaining American market share as front-wheel drive economy cars, and the Dodge Omni and Plymouth Horizon Twins were Chrysler's answer to this. Originally there was a desire to make the Omni a coupe, but the design team ultimately decided to go with a four-door model to attract a wider buying audience. The Omni's four-cylinder engine and transmission options were in stark contrast to the usual inline-six and V8 options from Chrysler through the 60s and into the early 70s, and starting in 1978, the Omni was sold with a 1.7-liter VW four-cylinder engine, making 75 horsepower, and this was either paired with a VW four-speed manual or a Chrysler three-speed automatic transmission. It wasn't until 1981 that the Omni received the legendary 2.2 liter engine that I came to know and love on my very first car. There it is, my 83 Omni, my first car I spent $500 on way back when. As these cars progressed through the 80s, there were a few engine variations to the Omni, including a turbocharged GLH variant you see here. Mine was a two barrel carbureted non-turbo that had 84 horsepower and would only do burnouts in my dreams. Between the Omni and Chrysler K-Car series, these two helped save Chrysler from bankruptcy and helped keep brands we know now as Dodge, Chrysler, and the eventually discontinued Plymouth line alive right through the 80s into today. While the Omni was my first car and I ran that thing into the ground as a 16-year-old that knew nothing about cars, my second car was a 1983 AMC Eagle with faded blue paint and wood grain trim down the sides. Ah, uh, what a ride. This particular Eagle I found at Mopar's in the Valley Car Show had a freshly rebuilt engine and Holley Sniper EFI fuel injection. If you've never heard of this car, American Motors Corporation had many different two- and four-door automobiles throughout the mid to late 70s, and the very first AMC Eagle prototypes were basically an AMC Concorde four-door station wagon with the four-wheel drivetrain of an AMC Jeep underneath of it. The idea of a full-time four-wheel drive system in a car was innovative, and the concept of all-wheel drive in a passenger car simplicity was unique for its time. Looking back at it, this was one of, if not the very first crossover vehicles well before that was even a moniker used in the automotive industry. Running the legendary 258 cubic inch inline 6 coupled with the 904 automatic transmission, my trusty Eagle took me through the deepest of snow, down a few logging roads in its day, and racked up many, many miles, taking me back and forth to work. As a funny side note, true story, I still remember going to the local Jeep dealer for some random Eagle part and having the service manager ask me if I buy vacuum hose by the roll. All joking aside, it pains me to say that AMC met its demise after Chrysler bought them out in 1988. The last Eagles rolled off the assembly line in December of 1987, and while the Eagle name was still carried on and eventually discontinued in 1998, I still wonder what might have been. Comparing these to Subaru, they were right there building box little four-door sedans and station wagons at the same time Eagles were rolling off the assembly line. And it makes me think if the Eagles were manufactured a little bit better or AMC had a little bit more money to work with, what might have been. I never actually owned a 1986 Dodge Shelby Charger, but found this at a recent Cars and Coffee and had to do a review of it. Something I didn't touch on much with the Omni earlier is that both of these cars were built and upgraded from their stock counterparts by the legend himself, Carroll Shelby. Beginning in 1983, the styling and suspension were the main modification points by Shelby and his team. And the infamous turbocharged version of the 2.2 debuted in 1985, making 146 horsepower. 
Just under 8,000 Shelby Chargers were made for each model year 1985 and 1986. In 1987, only 1,011 were manufactured, with an additional 1,000 units being made and shipped to Carroll Shelby's facility in California. These were all painted black and used to make the infamous GLHS Shelby. A very big thank you to the owners of these three cars for helping to bring back some 80s nostalgia here. If you've enjoyed this video, consider saying thank you by hitting that like button and subscribing. And while you're here, check out some of the other fantastic fresh vintage videos. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. But with that, thanks for watching and I hope you have a blessed day.